usually when we think about the Tower of Babel. We think about the, the people building a tower to reach into heaven, and we assume that that's because they want to somehow get into heaven. They want to go up this tower for whatever variety of reasons. And we usually assume that it's, this is the, an act of pride. They want to make a name for themselves. There's a couple of details from the ancient world that can give us pause for thought on some of that. The first thing is that the towers that they built in the ancient world, these ziggurats that are well known from ancient Mesopotamia, uh, that are characteristic of the cities, the early cities, these towers were not built for people to go up. They stretch into the heavens, they have their head in the heavens because they're hoping that God will come down. Uh, that's a very different picture. It fits very well in the scope of Genesis because remember in Genesis 3, people had lost access to the presence of God and they longed to get it back. And in chapter 11, the builders are trying to recover, reclaim the presence of God building a tower to heaven, hoping that he'll come down. These towers were built next to the temples and that God would come down, enter his temple and be worshiped and settle among them, his presence reestablished. Well, that's a meaning that we wouldn't have caught before without knowing what ziggurats were in the ancient world. But there's more. We would ask, well, what's wrong with that? Why doesn't God, why isn't he pleased that the people want him to come down and live among them. Isn't that what God has always wanted? Yes, it is. But here's the rub. They wanted to do it to make a name for themselves. Now, in the ancient world, we learned that making a name for yourself is not a particularly bad thing. Um, the idea is that you want to be remembered. You could do that by having children. Having children is making a name for yourself. Anything that you do that's notable, memorable, is making a name for yourself. You could do very good things to make a name for yourself. You could do bad things to make a name for yourself. Building projects, adventures, conquests, wisdom, all kinds of things could make a name for you. So making a name itself is not a bad thing. But here, once we understand that they're trying to reestablish sacred space, to learn that they want to do that to make a name for themselves raises a red flag. Because if you're bringing back sacred space, you should be doing it to make a name for God. It's God's name that should be exalted and glorified in the place in which he dwells. And Deuteronomy talks to us about this, how God was going to find a place to put his name there, that his name might be glorified and exalted. So when they're building sacred space, they should be trying to make a name for God, not to make a name for themselves. So now we figured out that it's about sacred space, which we didn't know before, but the tower really tells us that if we understand the ancient context of it that it's for making a name that has to do with what the temple is for and what sacred space is all about. And we can understand why God rejected that initiative of theirs, because it was motivated by what they felt they could gain. Now we could look more into the ancient world and figure out why did they think they would gain from it? And the ancient world can tell us that. By having God in their midst, they thought that then God would prosper them and bless them and uh, give them protection and all sorts of benefits. So it was a good thing to have a God in your pocket, so to speak, to have God in your midst. And so in that sense, that's, they wanted it not because it was important for God to have a dwelling place. They wanted it because they could gain from it. And so now we've learned to interpret this short nine verses in a very different way from the information we've learned from the ancient Near East. At the same time, we've now figured out that Genesis 11 is sort of a, a bookend with Genesis 3. Lost presence of God, trying to regain the presence of God. And then we'll learn that this gives us the bridge over to chapter 12, the covenant, because the Tower of Babel was human initiative, the covenant was God's initiative, the way he was going to reestablish his presence. And suddenly Genesis makes more sense. And so this is what we're doing when we're trying to get to this ancient Near Eastern backgrounds. And this is how readers are going to benefit by these notes. This is not material that you will find in another study Bible.